Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line, talking with elder law attorney Tim Takis. All kinds of, of issues on the table when it comes to planning for the cost of nursing home care. A loved one uh, may be facing those uh, questions and or wills or setting up a trust, all kinds of things. Let's go to Greta. Hello, Greta. Greta? Yes, I'm um, 86 years old, live in my own home, which I own, have enough money through some new annuities to um, live, um, have one daughter who is disabled on a disability and has her own funds from an inheritance that hopefully we'll, she'll be able to uh, live for a number of years, although she's uh, only 62. Uh, my thoughts are to try to live in my own home with help. If I, when I, I'm perfectly fine now, but when if I need help to try to live here until I become disabled and have to go to a nursing home, then I, I'm hoping that I could keep the house as an investment to 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 help with the nursing home expenses. When I am after I'm deceased, if I've been in the nursing home, I understand from what you all were saying that then the state can recoup or Medicare, Medicaid, can recoup from the house. And I understand that anything that's left after they recoup my nursing home expenses, would it could it then go to my daughter's estate? Okay. Now, let's talk about her situation. So Greta says... All right, she wants to live in her house for as long as she can, and then she would expect maybe to go to a nursing home. And at some point, we'll get into that conversation about, you know, what other options does she have? And I think Greta probably, you know, as she starts thinking through this, she'll think about what other options. But, okay, she says, well, you know, if I die in a nursing home and I, and I have a house, and I understand the state has a right to recoup unless she is survived by a spouse or a disabled child. A blind or disabled child. And there's some other exceptions, like if she had a child under the age of 21 or some other things. But I mean, the idea there are some exceptions to that rule. Right. You know, so, you know, I would say to Greta is like, okay, you know, let's, you know, let, let's think of a plan for her that, okay, she. She, wanna, she wants to think about a plan that, okay, how, what is her plan for staying at home for as long as she can? You know, she says that she has money, and that's good. All right, now, but just having money and be able to stay home is not necessarily the best thing for her because if she can't get out, you know, does, is the highlight of her day is when the caregiver shift changes or whatever, right. watching TV. You know, so sometimes, you know, it's important to have socialization. Mm -hmm. um, she has the. She says she has the money to do that. Um, if she, if she, maybe she hires a family member to come in. She has somebody to drive her places. You know, not worry about the house because she knows that you know when she passes away, the house will go to her daughter. But what I would also suggest to Gre Greta is think about. Well. If, if she leaves money or property to her daughter, what if her daughter is, you know, she's, her daughter is disabled, so does, does, does she need to have a plan for her daughter? You know, does her, there's, does, does her daughter need a trust in place? You know, so that her daughter just doesn't, because her daughter could be on public benefits, you know, at the time that Greta dies, or maybe that when Greta, maybe when Greta dies and leaves money to her daughter, and then her daughter gets, because she's disabled now, maybe she winds up needing extended care mm -hmm. you know so maybe she has a trust in place so a lot of that's a lot of the sort of things that I think of that you know that that you know that are sort of like right in the kind of planning that we do you know is to have conversations with our clients and our families about well, what about this you know one you know hopefully we've dispelled one concern that she has already which is don't worry about the house going to the state right right I mean you have another option there you know don't worry about your daughter getting that you know but at the same time you know think about some other things that may be important to her you know and how she can help herself and help her daughter Greta thank you for that call thank you yeah. for calling in let's go to Mary hello Mary yes hi what's on your mind I wish you would explain what the trust is and the five year look back on that uh, Social Security or the right. permanent 
Yeah. Explain that. I don't understand. Oh, I'd the be glad to. You know. And I know we've, you know, every time, and I'm, I'm glad Mary called me out on that. I deserve that one because <laughs> it's like, you know, we've been talking about a trust and then people, you know, I think they, I think some people think that, well, is that like a black box in outer Mongolia? You know, where I have people that come in and say, well, can a trust, can a trust invest money? Because they think that's like you're giving it to somebody in a shoebox, mm -hmm. you know, and that person's supposed to hold it and that's like a trust. But, but basically what a trust is, is a legal way, you know, where one person or entity, a corporation say, you know, holds, manages and distributes money or property for the benefit of somebody else. You know, it has, so, so, you know, here's Ben and he goes, you know, I want to set up a trust for, you know, you have, let's say, a, a, a child or other family member, you know, so you name somebody as your trustee, somebody who is going to hold that money, so you transfer, say, $100 to that person, you know, and that person says, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, and you write out instructions for what they're supposed to do with it, you know, and they hold that for somebody else. You know, and I, when I, sometimes when you think about that is, is that, well, what happens if something happens to the trustee? It's like, well, the law protects it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, what a great thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that if the, trust, you know, if, the, if the trustee has creditor problems, is it the money going to be gone? No, because the law protects those assets, you know, that are in the name of that trust, you know, name of that for the benefit of somebody else. So that's you know, a very so pow powerful tool. It's a tool. very powerful tool. You know, and now, if people say, well, you know, how does that, how, what's the five-year look back? Well, if you give money or property away with the, with the uh, 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 intent, apparently, that, well, I, I want to do this now so the nursing home doesn't get it in the future, right? or that I have to spend, or so I can qualify for Medicaid someday. Right. The state says, the Medicaid program says, yeah, we'll let you do that, but if you do that, you're going to wait five years before you become eligible. Now, there are some exceptions you know, to the transfer rules, but that's just the general rule. If you transfer it to a trust, it's the same thing. You know, you, you know you, you, if you transfer it away and you cannot legally get that asset back, whether it's you giving it to somebody outright or you put it into a trust, which you can't legally retrieve, the state says, well, that's a gift and that starts a five-year look back. Right. So from the date that you did that to five years later, don't come look into Medicaid to help pay for your care. Right. That's really all that means. That's what the five-year yeah. look back is. Now, the state doesn't, you know, and I get this question that comes up a lot, too, is, is that, well, you know, is the state, you know, they're just going to come and get the money out of the trust, right, if I don't get five years? I say, no. So all that means is, is that you can't get Medicaid for five years. They don't come to the trustee or and say, you better get that money back or we're going to take it from the trust. Trustee. All right, here, yeah, I just put on, put on your mic there. Let's go to the next call. Yeah. Let's go to Betty. Hello, Betty. Betty, are you there? Okay, I'm back, hopefully. You're there? Yeah. Betty, hello, Betty. We're going to come right back to you, Betty. Let's go to Mike. Mike, are you there? I am here. Go right, right ahead. ahead. Yes. Uh, Betty, Betty? I hear him Bye. asking about Betty. You may need to turn down your TV. Okay. He's going, I didn't know there was a delay. <laughs> so be careful what you say, Mike. Okay, are we ready? <laughs> We're ready. Yeah, go, go right for ahead. It. Okay. I'm Mike. My sister is divorced, and it was a contested divorce. Uh, uh -huh. Her children sided against her during the divorce. My sister went to the county courthouse, made out a will, leaving her property to a sibling. In her will, she specifically stated that uh, she did not want to leave her property to her biological children. Right. The, uh, at the courthouse, uh, it was witnessed by court officials that she was of sound mind and that she wants her children not to receive any of her assets. All right. My question is this. Is your sister it's deceased? It's notarized yeah. and filed at the courthouse. Right. Can the children get her assets even though she made out a legitimate, filed, certified, notarized will? All right. Well, the short answer to that question is if it is, if it is a valid will, the only person that you cannot disinherit without potential consequences is your spouse. 
So you can disinherit your children. You can disinherit your children. Now, let's talk about that because uh, you know, we, I know we have a couple of callers here and we'll get to them in a minute, but um, we, I sometimes see people that come in and they have lawyers or that have done a will that leaves like each child like a $10. And you've heard me say this before. It's like, no, 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 don't do that. Because what does it do? You know, if you, it's clearly they're meaning, they're meaning to disinherit that child right. or those children. Right. The idea, what you do is, is that you say, you know, I have, you know, my name is, my name is Mike and I have four children and the names are these persons and I leave them nothing. That's all you have to do. You know, and as long as you have a valid will, you know, that it was signed, you know, that it was, you know, it meets, meets the requirements of the law, that you have what is called testamentary capacity, which means that you understood what you were doing, you were not under undue influence or whatever, then you have a valid will, and the children may come in and say, no, 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 no. The problem comes when you say something like, I'm going to give each of them $10, and I'm going to give the rest of my estate to somebody else. Well every one of those children is going to make trouble because now you've made them beneficiaries of your estate and they're going to say we want an accounting we want bond posted you know we want all of this sort of stuff you so know. they can hold up the will. they become beneficiaries of the estate I see you know and I believe I believe it or not I've seen lawyers do that and I've had people say no I'm not gonna you know don't do that mm -hmm. or they put in there that something like well I'm not leaving my children anything because you know, my daughter is, you know, is, you know, X, Y, and Z, or whatever it is, and the daughter comes in and says, that's clearly wrong. You know, so one you of know, those and things so then, you see what I'm saying is you don't, you don't have to put in a reason that you were disinheriting somebody, because as soon as you put a reason in, somebody walks in and says, mom was wrong, so that's, that, that uh, she does, yeah. so she didn't know what she was doing. Just say I leave them nothing. But right. It, all right, so in the movies, sometimes it'll be like, okay, we give um, so and so the house, and, and and I give so and so this this uh, coloring book or something. You know, yeah. it's basically worthless. But would right. that then make them a that beneficiary? That makes them a beneficiary. And they could. They are a beneficiary of the estate. Wow. Okay. Now, maybe a judge will say, "Look, that clearly was intended to, to disinherit that person." You know, but do you want to litigate that too? Right. You know, for somebody that says, "I don't care how much this is going to cost me. I just want to make trouble." You know, when you're, you know, when you have the, you know, when the options are, you know, doing something else. All right, we have to take a break. Then we're going to come back. We're going to go through a bunch of calls. So All hold right. on the line. We have several calls. Hold on the line. We're, we're going to get your call. We're going to get We will uh, take a break. Be back right after this.